While playing GTA Vice City, did you observe that Colonel Cortez was not entirely honest with Tommy, or was perhaps hiding something from him? After all, Cortez was supposed to help Tommy catch the person responsible for the failed exchange at the docks, and in the end, we all know it ended up a bit different. So, the question here is whether most GTA Vice City fans rightly treat Cortez as a good character and also as a friend of Tommy Versetti. Today, we will talk about this subject, trying to answer both the question from a second ago and whether Cortez is honest with Tommy or not. Welcome to the Gaming Investigators channel, and let's get down straight to business! In our opinion, Colonel Cortez does not tell Tommy everything he knows and who exactly he is from the very beginning. Of course, it's not like we expect him to tell us about every detail of his life and reveal all his business secrets. However, the man, in the end, isn't even going to mention that he is a bloody influential person with powerful connections. The man also decides not to mention the fact that Tommy, carrying out a certain task for him, may have enormous trouble in the future. Namely, it is about the troubles related to the organization of The Shining Path, which we will talk about at the end of this video, because frankly speaking, it is a topic worth more attention. Coming back to the main idea, we can of course guess many things from the context. After all, it's not hard to notice the great Cortez's yacht with the entire crew of sailors. In addition, they are quite well trained and equipped with additional weaponry, as we learned during the All Hands on Deck mission by the way. Besides, what we mentioned earlier, Cortez is a person who, above all, has powerful contacts. This is already shown by the beginning of the game, where we find out that it was Cortez who was supposed to find people for the Ferrellis who would like to sell them some merchandise to start a new branch of this organization's business. What's more, Cortez was not only supposed to take care of finding a supplier, but also he had to ensure the safe course of the transaction, where, as we remember it, did not go exactly as planned. In conclusion, Cortez had to be someone extremely important and respected, and he was entrusted with so many important tasks. It is natural then that Cortez should find out rather quickly who was behind the failure of a deal that he organized by himself. So, we would assume that a person like Cortez should be very useful to Tommy, considering that Tommy promised to pay Sonny back a large sum of money and that he would find the culprits. However, Cortez did not make things easier for Tommy, to be honest. The whole story with Cortez begins with the party mission, where the colonel confirms for the first time that he will try to find the assassins, but since the whole case is not so obvious, he needs to put everything together, which will take more time. This is understandable. Even though the whole incident echoed widely in sunny Vice City, nobody expects that everyone around knows who, how, and for what, and only Tommy and Ken are very uninformed on this issue. Generally speaking, this matter is serious, and solving this mystery is not the easiest one. Another mission related to this thread is the Treacherous Swine Quest. Colonel Cortez learns that Gonzalez may have spilled the beans about the drug deal, which led to its interruption. Cortez asks us to take out Gonzalez and then assures us that after doing this favor, he will continue to look for traces of the stolen money and the drugs. Frankly speaking, this is a little pointless. Even though we get the person who revealed some details about the transaction, it does not bring us any closer to catching the perpetrators. Apart from that, we still have no money and no drugs. It would be necessary to find out if Gonzalez did it for sure, and if so, to whom exactly. Furthermore, it would be worth considering why Cortez is not obliged to give back at least part of the lost money. After all, he was responsible for setting up the entire deal, and he was supposed to make the transaction go smoothly. He failed, so it's kind of weird that he got away with it completely. But because we do not know the behind the scenes of the contract between Ken Rosenberg and Cortez, we cannot have any explicit reasons to blame Cortez here. And to go even further, we would rather say it is Ken's fault that in his contract with Cortez, he did not secure the interests of the Ferrelli Mafia in case the deal ended in a fiasco which happened anyway. What shows in this situation that Cortez does not fully treat Tommy as a friend is a way the colonel is rewarding Versetti's work. Tommy receives from him pennies, for which at most Tommy can repaint his car. 
Generally speaking, one gets the impression that Versetti is treated with contempt like some errand boy with an enraged Sonny in the back of his head, whose patience will end sooner or later. Moving on, we have one of the next missions for Cortez where he asks us to oversee Ricardo Diaz's transaction. Partially, it is good for Tommy, as he can personally meet the drug lord who will become his target in the future, and also show Tommy the tips of the drug business. But at the moment, Tommy knows absolutely nothing from Cortez about the failed drug deal. Cortez didn't find anything, and Tommy is de facto forced to help him once again, of course, mainly because any amount of money will be important to him. And it all comes down to the Sir Yes Sir mission. The man mentions to Tommy about his suspicions about Ricardo Diaz. Of course, as in the case of Gonzalez, Cortez has no evidence whatsoever, only his theories and guesses about it. Theoretically, Cortez helped us to solve the mystery related to the drug exchange at the docks, but as you can see, money and goods are still missing. Best of all, the man asks Tommy for another favor that isn't all that simple. Cortez wants Versetti to steal a tank for him. Of course, Tommy only receives a lousy $2,000 as a reward, which is another freaking joke. <laughs> Even if we look at the last mission for Cortez, called All Hands on Deck, it is not better either. Tommy kills a whole bunch of alleged agents and helps Cortez get out of Vice City. Cortez, in turn, pays Tommy 5,000 bucks and gives him an average quality speedboat as a token of his gratitude. We're wondering where we will put this awesome gift. To sum up this thread, we believe Cortez may have helped Tommy much earlier, but he didn't want to do it selflessly. The man preferred to use Tommy properly for his own first before helping him solve the problem. Just a pity that he didn't even want to give Tommy some money to pay off his debt to the Ferrellis. Not only that, the man did not even offer his help in the fight against Diaz. And it's not even that Cortez would personally grab a rifle and storm the villa with Lance and Tommy. For instance, it could have been at least some symbolic help in the form of providing a decent weapon. In the meantime, it's time to move on to the second part of the episode, namely discussing the topic related to the French. In the game itself, we are dealing with a total of three missions for Cortez, which relate to this thread. However, it turns out that it was originally not supposed to concern the French, but someone else entirely. Namely, the GTA Vice City files from the Defective Edition version, the photo of which can be seen on the screen, show that the developers planned for Cortez to have a conflict with the mysterious Shining Path organization. Perhaps let's start with the historical background itself first. It all started in Peru in 1980, when a group of rebels sparked an internal conflict aimed at overthrowing the current government through guerrilla warfare and replacing it with the so-called New Democracy. This is when the Shining Path organization was founded. It is worth mentioning that, before the conflict with the Shining Path organization in 1980, Peru underwent a series of coups with frequent changes between political parties and ideologies. For example, on October 2, 1968, General Juan Velasco Alvarado carried out a coup and became the 56th president of Peru under the administration of the left-wing military dictatorship. Later on, after a period of widespread poverty and unemployment, Velasco was overthrown in another coup on August 29, 1975. He was replaced as president of Peru by Francisco Morales Bermudez, who, ironically, was the next general, but above all, he was the current prime minister. Morales announced that his reign would bring significant improvements this time. There would be many political and economic reforms, among other things. Unfortunately, he failed to keep these promises as the so-called Constituent Assembly was formed in 1978, which replaced the 1933 Constitution. Morales then announced that his reign would run until the 1980 elections, which actually happened. And now, after this short outline of the whole story, let's move on to the analysis of the mission performed for Colonel Cortez that is related to the whole background we just described. We are talking about the Mall Shootout mission, where our task is to pick up the so-called guidance chips from a certain courier. These are presumably the chips needed for the operation of the naval guidance systems, at least that's what we deduced from Fallout 4 where similar chips appear. 
This may suggest that Cortez is planning to fire from the ocean at certain places or objects, and probably the coordinates are inside these chips. Unfortunately, we have to exclude the rest of the missions since it would be impossible to get anything interesting from them about this Shining Path group apart from the aforementioned reference to the group in the All Hands on Deck mission. Summing up today's episode, we could not necessarily call Colonel Cortez a friend of Tommy Versetti from our point of view. The man repeatedly entrusted Tommy with tasks that were largely done for the interests of Cortez himself. In addition, Cortez did not try to support the main character financially, although he had a lot of opportunities in this matter. Instead, Cortez was offering Tommy very low wages and Versetti had to constantly earn extra money elsewhere looking for a better payment. In addition, the colonel was involved in a possibly many years long conflict with the Shining Path guerrilla organization and entrusted Tommy with a task that could have exposed Tommy to potential problems he might encounter in the future. From this point of view, it can be said that it is good for Tommy that Cortez left Vice City, because it automatically ended the cooperation between the men, thus reducing the risk of Shining Path becoming interested in Tommy Versetti. However, we can't demonize Cortez that much because he also brought some advantages to Tommy's life. If only thanks to him, Tommy met Ricardo Diaz, which soon turned out to be Tommy's only way out of the Ferrellis. We highly encourage you to take a look at the video about why Mike Torino founded the local syndicate on behalf of his government agency. Last but not least, we also recommend you visit our second channel where we discuss news from the gaming world. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care!